Sunny 95. For light rock favorites, it's Sunny 95. You are watching WCMH TV, Columbus, Ohio. This is News Watch 4 with Doug Adair, Mona Scott, Angela Pace, meteorologist Jim Goodall, and the Dean of Central Ohio Sportscasters, Jimmy Crown. Good evening, everyone. For all anyone seems to know, 27-year-old Benito Goff was just standing in his front yard tonight when he was suddenly gunned down. It happened on the near northeast side of Columbus. It may have been shots fired from a passing car on East 25th. Tension was running high as family members waited for an ambulance. They said they felt as though they waited a long time. Someone was being accused of the uh, shooting on the scene, but police say that there is no suspect or motive. Goff was hit in the head. He's in critical condition. And look for a political shootout in suburban Dublin over the issue of merging with Washington Township. Bob Singleton says that the hired guns are pollsters and consultants who are working for one side or another. Nearly three weeks before Election Day, some numbers. What water and sewer service will cost Dublin and Washington Township residents if they merge and trade Columbus services for their own. Figures provided by those opposing the merger. It could be somewhere to $1,750 a year. And right now it's, it's 328 Roughly years. 328 a year average. Yes, these are all averages. The Dublin officials say they'll provide their own numbers on Thursday, but that a poll shows the merger is favored 3 to 1 in Dublin, 2 to 1 in Washington Township, regardless of cost. Did whether or not we contract with Thomas, whether we own our own treatment plants at some higher cost, does that make a difference? As the survey summary points out, it made little, if any, difference for most of the voters. Meanwhile, a Dublin City Council vote on whether to endorse the merger, delayed once, has now been delayed again and is now set for next Monday night. Also, after tonight's uh, meeting, Dublin City Council brought out their own legal consultant who says his reading of the law indicates that Columbus is obligated to provide at least sewer service clear through to the year 2008, 20 years from now. Uh, he was less certain about water. Uh, the city of Columbus, by the way, is uh, bound to, to take uh, issue with those figures. Uh, I guess uh, in the end, uh, those who haven't made up their mind yet, it's going to come down to deciding which consultant. Bob, why the reason for the two delays on the endorsement idea? Well, it's not so much uh, uncertainty about whether or not they're going to vote for or against the merger. They just want to make sure they have all the information that they've paid for. They've paid consultants to look into all these figures and uh, uh, to answer their questions. Uh, they haven't done that. They'll do it Thursday night. So they wanted to wait at least until then so the taxpayers' money would not have been wasted before they take the official vote. All right. Thank you very much, Bob. Some residents of Northeast Columbus have taken their fight to City Hall. Members of the Argyle Park community took petitions to City Council tonight asking for a full health study, water testing, soil and sewage sampling. They want the city to determine if fumes from the Plascolite plant on Joyce Avenue are causing health problems. Residents say emissions from the plant have poisoned the air and are somehow responsible for cancer deaths in that neighborhood. Two mothers tonight have taken their daughters out of Pleasant View uh, Middle School because of Satanism there and what they fear may happen to their children. Parents Mary Ream and Glenna Davis didn't want to go to the school, and so they met Principal Bob Skinner at a West Side resident, a restaurant. It was uh, last Friday the 13th that they were scared by a note with death threats, obscenities, and satanic symbols. The fact that I've been told that we have been marked, it's, it's real, I think it's really scary. The principal says Satanism doesn't exist at Pleasantville, but Holly Ream and friend Rachel say it's everywhere. Nobody takes it really serious. Nobody knows it's this common either. I mean, they think it's just a few people. Well, is it just a few people? No. These latest symbols of Satanism in southwestern Franklin County may be nothing more than teenage pranks, but at least two mothers think that it has gone too far. Heavy trading has helped to keep October 16th from being another Black Monday on Wall Street. The Dow started the day on the downside, but closed up 88 points. After last Friday's 191-point plunge, many were worried about how the market was going to fare today. But small investors selling early in the day helped bring prices down far enough for many large investors to start buying up stock, pushing stock prices up again. Paula Toti says even if you're not an investor, you should be aware of how the last few days on Wall Street affect you as a taxpayer. 
Some of the biggest surges in the stock market in the past few years have been financed by taxpayers. The stocks I'm talking about are called takeover candidates. Here's how to think of them. You know when you buy a house, you take out a loan, and the interest you pay on that loan, you deduct from your taxes. But when you buy a house, you're only allowed what's in your budget. On the other hand, imagine buying a company for $7 billion. Today, Donald Trump decided against that bid for the parent company of American Airlines. But to finance a deal like that, the buyer or management goes into debt. It owes bondholders interest payments like you owe the bank. And even when those payments are unrealistic, they're tax deductible. When management can't make these payments, it sells assets in the company, employees are laid off, or it simply defaults on the payments altogether. Because many of these deals are starting to go sour, it was a big reason for the market plunge Friday, and takeover stocks were the ones hammered again today. If there's a tip for the investor in this current market environment, it may be to avoid stocks that are going up only because of takeover rumors, and look for real quality. In other words, back to basics may be the key. It may be one good thing that came out of the market plunge on Friday. Now, we will likely see more of these takeover deals fail to get financing. The bonds they use for financing are called junk bonds, and you can think of this basically, Doug, as bad loans, or at least unrealistic debt they represent. And yet that is not to say that all bonds are bad. No, absolutely not. The Treasury bonds have been doing really well. The bond market itself has been doing really well, but when you're holding a bond that pays you 16% interest, that's unrealistic in this environment. Okay, Paula, thank you. There were, as we know, fortunes to be made by investing in the Columbus treasure hunt that found a ship loaded with gold on the bottom of the Atlantic. And according to the Columbus editor of Business First, uh, Jim Briner, that story played a part in the decision of dispatch publisher John F. Wolf to ask editor Luke Feck and the managing editor to resign. Briner says Wolf family members had been heavy investors in the search. John did not want to run that list. As I understand it from a number of sources at the dispatch, a compromise was reached in which they would run the names of the investors, but not the amounts that they invested. Picture the night of a teenager wanted for murder in Hilliard, 17-year-old Lee Atkins, Jr., for the robbery murder of 69-year-old Margaret Fisher last week. A woman who was from Hilliard moved to Marysville, then had moved back to Hilliard just four days before she was found shot to death, shot after she had been seen with the suspect at a bank. Atkins is believed to be tonight with 17-year-old Sheila Snyder in a 1982 beige Ford Escort. Federal officials have released the control tower tape from a mysterious Atlantic flight that ended in a crash. The last radio transmission made by attorney Thomas Root before his small plane went down near the Bahamas last July. Root had radioed a distress signal complaining of chest pains. The plane then flew on autopilot for several hours until it finally crashed. Root was unconscious when he was rescued, and he had somehow suffered a gunshot wound to the abdomen. He's a former OSU and Ohio Wesleyan student who has been practicing law in Washington. He's had money trouble this year and is under investigation in connection with drug trafficking. Angela and I'll be right back. Another flight begins on the Atlantic coast now in just a matter of hours. And on the Gulf Coast, what was left by Hurricane Jerry. the special babies of the world, St. Anne's offers the area's premier maternity services. Plan a special birth for your baby. Call St. Anne's at 898-MOMS. Hey guys, I got some Kentucky Nuggets, Chicken Little, and some original recipe chicken. Where's yours? <laughs> it's a three for all at Kentucky Fried Chicken. What? what? Three great deals, all with fries, just $1.99. Choose six Kentucky Nuggets, four Chicken Little sandwiches, or two pieces of original recipe chicken, all with fries, just $1.99. There he is. Get him. One no, Kentucky Nuggets. Hey.
You guys! What? Free for all at Kentucky Fried Chicken, just $1.99. Right stop, cruising in the city. Top down, looking real pretty. Sales time. Oh, well, summer was over anyway. And fall means move out the 89s. We've got new Festivas, $109 a month, no money down. Brand new Rangers, $149 a month, no money down. Plus nice four-door factory cars like this 89 Tempo with automatic and air conditioning, only $79.95. I've been an ag chem dealer right here for over 12 years now. West Bend's a neat little community. It's a great area. we got friendly people. Our farmers rely on us for many things. The environment is probably the number one area. As a professional in this business, we want quality in the environment and productivity. I want my children to be able to raise their children here. Brought to you by your state licensed ag chem dealers and Monsanto. In news around the uh, world tonight, NASA has 200 armed security guards around the Kennedy Space Center. Death has claimed another of Hollywood's leading actors, and a Soviet fan of Elvis goes to Graceland. There were at least seven protesters who were arrested today for trespassing at the Cape. They were part of a larger group hoping to disrupt tomorrow's launch of the space shuttle Atlantis, and there is the fear that they will try again tomorrow. This is the first shuttle to carry a nuclear-powered satellite into orbit. Launch time, 12.57 tomorrow afternoon, and the weather does look good. Hurricane Jerry has cut a path of death and destruction along the Texas coast. He's now a tropical depression, blowing itself out as it moves inland. Over the weekend, Jerry's tornadoes, heavy rains, and winds of up to 100 miles an hour ripped into the city of Galveston, tearing up trees, ripping down power lines, and flattening buildings. Jerry is being blamed for three deaths, three people in a pickup truck that was blown over a seawall. A massive car pile up in France today when a car slammed into a burning truck and 20 other cars followed. Five people were killed, 23 were seriously injured, and police say that the truck caught fire when it plowed into a stationary car which had been abandoned on the highway. And then some 15 minutes later, 20 other cars plowed into each other on the other side of the highway. Kolya Vasin has left the Soviet Union for the first time, and he's gone to Memphis in his blue suede shoes. The 44-year-old music lover has traveled to the land of the Hound Dog and the Heartbreak Hotel to pay tribute to Elvis. He says he's been an Elvis fan since hearing a bootleg recording of Jailhouse Rock more than 30 years ago. He's said to be the first person granted a Soviet visa just to visit Elvis Presley's Graceland Mansion. He's got on the King's T-shirt and everything. Yeah. And that brings us to Jim Ganahl, but <laughs> you may not want to hear what he has to say tonight. <laughs> and later, a happier Buckeye coach, John Cooper. Did you buy gas, dear? He's at the He's dear. At the Touchdown! <laughs> Only seven seconds left. Now he stands. Did you buy gas, dear? Chance to ice the game. Here's the dear. And it's good. Deep left field. Way back. Uh -oh. Out of here. Don't we need to buy gas, dear? No, dear. But why not? We just won some. Enter as often as you like in the $125,000 Super America Gas Giveaway. Register now through October 26th. Want to take off but can't decide whether to drive or fly? Do both. Buy or order any new 1990 Cutlass Supreme, including the all-new four-door, by November 4th. And get two round-trip tickets to Nassau, Bermuda, or anywhere Delta flies in the continental U.S. Buy a coupe and get even more. Now, do you drive, then fly, or fly, then drive? This is not your father's automobile. This is a new generation of... Two round-trip tickets on Delta. See a participating Central Ohio old dealer now. Hi, I'm meteorologist Jim Ganahl. We are forever comparing products from the U.S. and Japan. Well, they had a pumpkin growing contest in Ashibetsu, and the winner weighed 473 pounds. Now, that's a Japanese record, but we had a 600-pounder on here a week ago, and we think Circleville will top 473 pounds as well. Our weather is next. Why don't all airlines give awards for the kind of mileage the average guy racks up? In TWA's Frequent Flight Bonus Program, you can earn free round-trip flights with just 20,000 miles. And your mileage credits never expire. 
When you do business all over, it's good to know there's an airline that flies there. The TWA network covers over 150 business centers in 18 countries. Today's TWA. Find out how good we really are. I certainly would not be at Notre Dame had I not had the opportunity to work for Woody Hayes. The values that he taught and the discipline and certainly the fundamentals are things that you can't possibly learn in a book. I was exceptionally fortunate to be with Coach Hayes. An outstanding person, a great motivator, and a great fundamentalist. He was a caring individual who was totally committed to Ohio State and this country. And those qualities are rarely duplicated. Three identical cars. The only difference is we've insured one with Allstate. The only national insurance company with new emergency dispatch service. Let's see which car goes farther. EDS sends help anytime, any place you break down with one toll-free call. Look, the Allstate driver makes the call and the tow truck is on the way. There you have it. Dramatic proof that Allstate with new EDS outperforms the competition 24 hours a day. Just ask an Allstate agent. Remember how you were pushing me to wear shorts to the stadium mm -hmm, Saturday? Sure. Must have been 20% of the people who were in shorts. I believe it. Wow, but and you weren't among them. But no. there was a breeze, wasn't there? <laughs> there was a nice breeze up on top. Yep. You aren't going to need a breeze this coming weekend because uh, that'll give you a wind chill factor in the stadium this coming Saturday. Oh, that's so. bad. Yeah, big changes ahead. I have to show you. We could go someplace where it's warm. Our slide yeah. place is. This is in Freeport in the Bahamas, the Very Princess hard. Bahama. Howard, do you know her? Yes. Oh, you do? How come you know everybody that sends in slides? Because they're all my friends. She have a lot of friends. Okay, nice they slides. They have a lot of they slides. They just got back from here, too. <laughs> Our weather outside, not nah, changing. It's 66 degrees now. We've had two-tenths of an inch of rain. It rained so hard up by Hoover Reservoir, traffic came to a standstill for a while uh, during the early evening hours. I want to stress this number once again because the magnitude is unbelievable. 197 days, that's how long it'll be before we have a weekend like the one we just had, or maybe more. That takes us almost up to the 1st of May with 85 and sun Saturday and 80 on Sunday. We're going downhill in a hurry. Day wasn't bad though, it was 83 degrees at Toledo. They had more sunshine, our temperature 75, the morning low was 56, this afternoon a few showers in uh, southern Ohio, and then later today a line of thunderstorms on the cold front produced some heavy rains two inches in northwest Ohio in a short period of time. We have steady, heavy rain, light rain in the whole southern half of the state at the moment. The overall picture looks something like this. The remains of Hurricane Jerry and the cold front are bringing the dry spell to an end. The cold front itself is into northwest Ohio. High temperatures in the 30s and 40s behind it, 40s even in Texas, and better than that south and east. Watch the hurricane come in and then take a northeastern detour up into the state of Ohio and also parts of Kentucky and Indiana getting rain from that. We have a close-up view of it, too, and watch the clouds around it. They're kind of pretty how they fan out right there. And the storm producing lots of rain as it moves into our area, two to three inches in parts of Kentucky tonight. And some very heavy rain still on the forecast, an average of a half inch over most of Ohio, more to the north and west of us. They've already had that at Indianapolis, a couple of inches of rain, and two to four inches of snow in the Rockies overnight. Low temperatures drop into the teens in the west, and it's still summer-like over the south and eastern states during the night. And our highs tomorrow range from the 30s in the upper Midwest, the 80s in the southeast. We're still in a transition zones. We still get wet and are trying to get cooler. Estes Park, one of my favorite spots, had five inches of snow today, and the week ahead shows very cold to the west of us and very warm to the east of us. So our forecast shows a downward trend, as you'll see. Rain and thunder, low of 57, and tomorrow the highest temperatures going to be the midnight reading. We'll spend most of the day in the 50s with occasional showers. Kind of a brisk, chilly day coming up tomorrow. And beyond that, they get worse. It stays in the 40s for the rest of the week. And it would not surprise me to see a few flakes of snow Thursday and Friday, depending on the time of the day. Of course, it won't stick. And we'll be having our first measurable snow contest again where you can win the Toro snow throwers. Oh, golly. You almost didn't oh. get it out. That's a tough, tough Toro <laughs> snow thrower. I don't even try to say it anymore. <laughs> oh, well, they changed it on me. It is an exciting time of the it year, is. isn't it? it yes, is. it is. <laughs> Jimmy has John Cooper talking about the breaks that went our way. It's early morning, and Al D'Antonio's workday at Big Bear's Bakery is just beginning. 
He bakes from scratch, and that's a rare thing this day and age. Whether it's homemade bread, mouth-watering cinnamon rolls, or just passing out a free cookie, it's always the freshest. Al D'Antonio knows Big Bear is better because he helps make them better. Tyson boneless chicken, $1.99. Swanson homestyle entrees, three for $4. And banquet pot pies, two for 89 cents. Big Bear, better for you. Watching the dispatch for you every day. News, of course, but that's just the beginning. There's business, sports. Who's losing? Who's winning? Things to do and things to see. Who's on first? What's on TV? Coverage of a distant war. A story on the kid next door. Stories that'll make you proud. Things that make you laugh out loud. Make you think and question why. And sometimes even make you cry. Watch the dispatch for you every day. Subscribe. And find out why we say. It's a great match. The dispatch. And you. season is upon us. The next time you get a cold, try sucking on a zinc gluconate tablet. One study showed that one-third of the people that tried zinc had no more cold symptoms in less than a day. Now, it didn't work that well for everyone, but you may want to give zinc a try. And if you've always believed that vitamin C can cure or prevent a cold, scientists say forget this belief. There is no proof that vitamin C can get rid of or prevent a cold. For your health, I'm Jeannie Franz. If you're making payment number 42 on a car that lost its excitement way back on payment number 3. Shift to Pontiac Excitement on 1990 Grand Am LE Coupe. Excitement that lasts and affordable now. Sticker priced at under $10,600. That's over $1,600 less than Honda Accord. Plus, get $600 in introductory factory cash back. Shift to Pontiac Excitement. See your Columbus Pontiac dealers. Dennis Pontiac, Hadesby Pontiac, and Dave Gill Pontiac. Have you ever wondered why all Shoney's have those nice tile floors? How else could we be a family restaurant? <laughs> At Shoney's, we've come up with three new ways to serve our shrimp dinners. <laughs> this isn't one of them. It can be very confusing to pick out wallpaper. We can guide you. Well, at the Andersons, we like to say we sell the project and not the product. In other words, if you come and you finally picked out your wallpaper, know just what it is you want, we will custom tint paint to match that. We make sure when you leave that store, you have everything necessary to complete your project successfully. The Andersons will help you make your house a home. Jimmy Krug standing by with sports. This is traveling night for the series. Traveling night for the series. They go to San Francisco, just eight miles away from oh, where they were for the first bus series. Ride. <laughs> That's right. So far, the Bay Bridge series is turning out to be the blowout series. San Francisco manager Roger Craig is doing his best to get his team a win. Since the Giants have scored just one run in two innings, or two games rather, and are batting an anemic 145, Craig today announced some lineup changes as the team worked out at Candlestick. Pat Sheridan will replace Candy Maldonado in right field for game three tomorrow. Matt Williams will move from third to short, putting Jose Uribe on the bench. Ken Obergfell will play third. The Giants' offense needs to get better quick, and so does slugger Will Clark. A case of tonsillitis forced Clark to miss today's workout. Even though the Giants trailed 2-0 in the series, they look for a better day tomorrow. The biggest thing I remember about that is after we lost the third game to Baltimore in Pittsburgh, uh, Chuck Tanner came into the clubhouse and told us not to worry that we were going to win it, and he went over to the stereo system and turned up as loud as it would go and, and just told us to go have fun. So that's pretty much what I've told uh, most of the guys that... Last Monday, Ohio State football coach John Cooper was not a happy camper, but today, as he talked about Saturday's 35-31 win over Indiana, he was like Elsie the Borden cow, contented. We were able to control the line of scrimmage and run at them, using a two tight end offense quite a bit. Our, our philosophy on that was twofold. Number one, we wanted to, to keep the ball away from their <coughs> offense, and number two, we felt like uh, that was probably the best way for us to move the ball against Indiana's defense, because they did have 10 new starters coming back off of last year's uh, defensive football team and it was an effective game plan for us we got some breaks in the game the ball bounced our way and we were very fortunate on a couple different plays uh, uh, Judah Herman made a fine interception ran it back to their 18 yard line which set up a touchdown and then we got the deep onside kick we do work on that in practice and we feel like when we're kicking into the wind 
if you can't kick the ball in the end zone, deep in the end zone, you're better off. We felt like we were better off kicking the ball high up into the wind, let the wind hold it up. First time their man, their guy made a fair catch and caught the ball. And the second time, he fumbled the football, and uh, we were able to get the ball in good field position. For the second time in as many weeks, no change in the top seven in the AP college football poll. Notre Dame, Miami, Colorado, Nebraska, and Michigan make up the top five. Tennessee is number six, followed by Arkansas, Pitt, Southern Cal, and Alabama. Auburn, number 11, with North Carolina State, Illinois, Florida State, Washington State, Houston, Penn State, West Virginia, Air Force, and Florida rounding out the top 20. Brigham Young is 21st, followed by Arizona, Texas A&M, South Carolina, and Oklahoma. The Los Angeles Rams, the NFL's only unbeaten team in action tonight against the Buffalo Bills. Some fireworks before the game. L.A. running back and Columbus's own Greg Bell had some comments about the Bills, most notably head coach Marv Levy. Bell called Levy a con artist. So on the scoreboard, in the third quarter, the Rams lead the Buffalo Bills by a score of 7-6. to six. One game in the National Hockey League tonight, Montreal versus Washington. Look out, here comes one of the hardest hits of the hockey season. Now we go 3-2 overtime, or into overtime, the score tied 3-3. The Capitals steal the puck, pass it down the ice, and Washington's Dale Hunter gets it past the goalie. The Caps win 4-3 in sudden death overtime. You take a look at the scoreboard, Washington 4 and Montreal 3. Jay Burson, one-time John Glenn High School star, and more recently a standout for the Scarlet and Gray, will be back in the Buckeye State tomorrow night. Only this time, he'll be wearing the colors of the Houston Rockets of the NBA. The Rockets will face the Cleveland Cavaliers in an exhibition game tomorrow night at the Richfield Coliseum. This afternoon, Jay's father told me that some 200 residents of New Concord will be at the Coliseum for that preseason encounter. One of those things where the last person out of town turn out the lights. <laughs> right. We're all going up and watch right. Jay. Will he get some playing time, do you think? Oh, yes. Yeah, he, played, he, played, well. uh, he played 14 minutes the night before last, had 12 points, 4 oh. rebounds, 4 assists, and he's getting some playing time. Oh, he is, he has made the first cut, and right now he's 6 feet. That's his height, the yeah. give or take a little. I think he's more like 5'11". Yeah. But he only weighs 148 pounds, so he's putting weight back on. Okay. Good for him. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> the things we say that have a meeting we never intended. An example after this. What's worth waiting a year for? Lazarus Big November Sale. Wait no more. Come in now for our lowest prices of the season. Like 33% off dresswear for kids by Aero, Rare Editions, and more. Capture the moment on this RCA VHS camcorder, just $699.99. Then put them to rest in sleepwear. Now 33% off our entire stock. So wait no more. Come in now for our lowest prices of the season during Lazarus Big November Sale through Saturday. Don't miss it. captured the hearts and minds of a generation. From her first hit single through the classic songs of Tapestry and beyond, Carole King has remained a tremendous influence on the world of popular music. And now, in a rare concert appearance, she brings her remarkable music to the Ohio Theater, Wednesday, November 15th. Make plans now to spend an evening with Carole King. For tickets, call 221-1414. Presented by Sunny 95, Kappa, and your friends at Channel 4. Every night we bring you headlines with a message we'll have more later. And newsman Ed Baxter was giving the headlines at KGO Radio in San Francisco, and his co-host was a woman, Jan Black. His headline, new research indicates that the road to a healthy life is based on plenty of love and sex. And then he added, Jan and I will have more in half an hour. <laughs> <laughs>
Take that any way you want. All right. It. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> Good night. Be a part of the Newswatch 4 team. When you see news happen, call our news line on your Ameritech mobile phone by pressing star 4 send. The call is free to Ameritech mobile subscribers.